One of the things that's really important for me when I'm making a movie is that everyone work together, whether that be the actors and the and the, whether it be the people in front of the camera and behind, or whether it be the different quote unquote departments that work underneath me in making the movie, the art department who builds the sets and is in charge of props and things like that, and then the um, camera department which lights and shoots, and um, for me, well, the electrical and camera departments which light and shoot, and for me. When you make the best kind of a movie or the best, and you do the best technical work, you're working together in a great way. The choices of colors by the costume department um, and our wonderful costumer, Ariane, are, are made in concert with our production designers' choices of wallpaper and carpeting and color within these rooms. And all of that is made in concert with the choices of lighting temperature and, and lighting style that these sets and costumes and faces are going to be subjected to. I'm very lucky, and then I got people who really like working um, together. What you can get very often, and I've seen on movies, is where you have people kind of hoarding their decisions and keeping them from one another, and what you get at the moment, it's my time to work, is all these things are unveiled at once, and you just look at this, you know, it looks like a potluck dinner where everyone arrived with a different idea of what the scene's supposed to be. This is one of those scenes where um, that monologue John just did is... Um, he performed it so low, so quietly. And it's one of those moments where your sound man is freaking out because he's just sure it's never going to work and you're going to have to loop the whole thing. And to Stubby's credit, he's a great sound man. He's right, it was very low, and it did, the track does have a good amount of noise in it. But on another side, um, one of the wonderful things about film and microphones and all of that is that that there is a kind of intimacy you'll never know on the stage. Film, you know, I always want film to offer me something that I can't have in any other medium, and one of the things it offers me is these moments of incredible intimacy with an actor where they can be speaking so low and sharing something in a way that they'd almost share only with um, the closest of friends, and that the camera is so intimate with them that it captures these incredible fine nuances. I remember when I was directing this scene, I was in a much wider shot shooting a master, if you will, of the whole scene. And um, through the doorway, with John, was very small in the frame, John Hawks playing Larry. It was a shot more like this, even a little wider. And, um, and I got very nervous because John was getting to such an amazing emotional place doing this monologue. And I knew that kind of, the kind of discoveries he was making as an actor do not occur. You can't have that first moment over and over again, and you want it on film. And I plunged forward with the camera. I literally just stopped the setup we were doing, marched right into a single on John, because I knew he was um, ready, if you will, to do it. And we shot him doing that monologue, and I, was, I couldn't have gotten in there sooner. The first take was a, was a bloody miracle. And um, that's a lot of what my job is, besides all this stylish frou for and trying to be aware of the, of the structural issues of, of the movie and shot structures, one of the things that I have to be aware of for the actors that in a way is, is outside of their character work and the characters they're playing is just their own cooking times as actors. Actors have different kinds of, um, how would I say this? Well, cooking times is a good way. Some actors are very fast off the blocks, like John Cusack is very fast off the blocks. You need very little rehearsal with him. You really want to shoot your first takes and be ready for those to be usable because his early takes are going to be really wonderful and kind of oddly hard to ever replicate again if you need to keep shooting because some of the stuff he does is very fragile and small and kind of indescribable and hard to repeat. There are other actors you work with who actually just get warmer and warmer and better and better with repetition and keep discovering and keep discovering and actually can be a little stiff in the beginning. These are all the things that you get used to as a director. You're, you're as I said, figuring out your actor's cooking times and that that is, for me, how I structure a day. So if I have an actor with a very fast cooking time and they give me some of their best work early in the day, right away, the first times that the scene is happening, I shoot them sooner. If there's someone who loves to do the scene and keeps making discoveries, I'll save their singles and some of their coverage for the end of the day's work. It's an exhausting thing to show up every day and not only get soaking wet and be working in these same rooms in the same clothes every day, but to also have to go to these places of just being wigged out and upset every day and it takes a kind of courage and fortitude and and it's not easy you know watching like watching amanda single here 
and all these different shots that we have to relight and reset for each time, she's got to find her way back to this emotional space for each one of these setups, for each one of these places. Even if she's not completely on camera, she's got to be enough out there and acting that she's giving the actors, the other actors, what they need to react to her. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work and it's very emotionally exhausting. One of the things you get to play with in a widescreen frame also, and you dance with when you have lots of characters, you can kind of make a ballet out of the way these faces move and turn in your frame. People turning into close-ups and kind of coming in and filling the frame. The wide frame in a way allows a, a nicer dance of these looks and glances than you might get in another kind of frame. Again, you'll notice it's kind of um, the default position for a movie camera when you're shooting an actor's close-up is usually from about eye height straight on, or even a little above them. That's considered kind of classically the more glamorous way to shoot them. I, of course, <laughs> can't bear to do that almost ever, and, and I'm shooting them from underneath almost all the time. I just love the way it looks to feel um, kind of coming up at them. Um, I feel like the actors are, in a way, feel more vulnerable to the camera. And I feel kind of inside a personal space of theirs when I'm coming up and under them. It also is a part of the kind of noir look of the movie, which does um, very often feature kind of low angles and angles which accentuate kind of the perspectives of the scene, of the walls, of the... You see and feel the ceiling and the lighting fixtures of the rooms, and there's a kind of, again, a sense of claustrophobia. And now the lightning quiets down as we get quiet. It's very convenient lighting, in a sense. This is part of the joy of, um, of movies. It doesn't make movies fake. Some people might think things, pointing out pieces of artifice like this makes them less real or cheesy or something. To me, this is what movies are. They are, we know they're not real. It's a contract to make, to amplify life, to make life more amazing, to, to use the elements that we know of humanity, of nature, of feeling, of music, and to somehow make something convergent and orchestrated and more intense and commanding and focused than that which we experience in our normal lives. And that sometimes involves, and sometimes pushing it almost to the edge of a cliche, but having the courage to do so, I think, is, is to take things to their limit and see how far you can go, how much panache, how much fun you can have with a moment before it's too much.